listening to the Latina Leadership Podcast, the podcast made for Latinas by Latinas. Get comfortable, amiga, and enjoy the conversation. You know, what is your experience as a Latina creator? Well, I have, I feel like I've been a Latina creative since grade school. I've always been writing and making stuff and sharing it. However, it wasn't until I really started doing it as a profession that I met other Latinas who shared the same experience because I grew up in a space where there wasn't a lot of community around. So it, I didn't really see myself reflected in, in the spaces that I was in. And then once I married my husband, who definitely grew up with all of that, like he helped um, just shine a light on everything I was missing out on. I mean, I'm third generation Mexican American, um, fourth generation Phoenician. So yes, my culture was all around all the time, but there was also an element of assimilation by my parents to fit in with, um, you know, with what they thought would, you know, make my life easier and, and doing the best that they could as parents. But now me as a parent, as an adult, I realize like, it's so good to connect our kids and make them become familiar with, with community outside of our families. And so just for the past, gosh, like 30 years that I've been doing this professionally, it's just made such a big difference because I feel like I'm, we're all a lot of things. We're women, we're business people, we're creatives, and we're also Latinas. And so I try to reflect and incorporate all of that into everything that I do and, and normalize it of like, this yeah. is everyday life. You will see a little bit of all of these things in everything I do, because that's who I am. I love that you get to show up as yourself. So first of all, let's give it to him because you're a Mexican American artist, author, should I go on? Speaker, <laughs> entrepreneur, Shiro. Oh, you're probably, are you a mom, right? Yes, Wife, you said married. A, you're yes, on and a, on. A new grandmother. Um, my son, oh. had, had, they had a baby like last year. So all the things, but I call it like being a hyper creative and mm. like realizing, I didn't realize at the time, but I just wanted to do everything. And I, early on, like in high school, I made this list of all the things I wanted to do. Like I wanted to write women's fiction novels. I wanted to share craft projects. I wanted to interview celebrities. I wanted to travel all over the world. And I, I've done all those things. And I didn't even realize I had the list until after my mom passed away. And I found some of my journals from high school and I was looking through them and I'm like, oh my gosh, I was like manifesting even back then. I just knew what I wanted to do sometime in my lifetime. No, there was no timeline attached to it at all, but it was just like, these are things that I want to do. And over the course of several decades, I've been able to do them. So it's been a hyper creative multi hybrid I guess you can say, but I, I always like to tell people it's such a good example to realize that you have the time to do a lot of things. So get yes. started now on them one at a time because you you have the, the time and opportunities to make things, these, these things happen. Yes, yes. It's like stop scrolling and like create a PowerPoint or stop, right? Like you have uh -huh. the time. I agree with you. Let me tell you, my husband, um, without going off into a tangent about me because it's about you um well tell me all the time he's like you just want to do so many things like you're always trying to do stuff you know and i'm just mm -hmm. like if i die tomorrow without getting too dark but if i yeah. die tomorrow right i'm like yes. oh my god i want to know that i at least tried to do all exactly. the things that i love that i'm passionate about um not everybody's like that so this like hyper what did you call it hyper creative hyper or hyper creative and you know what it is, is it's just, and this is a message to anybody listening right now. It is so easy to get stuck on the hamster wheel of routine, mm -hmm. of doing the same things every day. And I look at it like staying on that one track. Every decision that you make 
puts you, either you stay on the same track or it can help you deviate to a different track and a different path, like a choose your own adventure. So if you can recognize every day, if you can say, I'm going to do something different today to mix it up, to, to create more opportunities, that will change the course of your life. Just doing one different thing a day. But we have been programmed and conditioned so much that we wake up, we drink our coffee, we check our email, we brush our teeth, we get dressed, we go to work, we deal with that, we come home, we eat, we drive in the same path every day. That yeah. is all routine. And if yeah. you could mix it up at least one different thing a day or incorporate something, take something out, put something new in, you will see change in your life. Amazing. It will become more interesting. That's for sure. Let me tell you, because you've got like, what, 12 books now that you've Yes, 12 books. And two of them are novels. One of them is about Frida Kahlo, which is a bestseller. And it's actually sold at the Frida Kahlo Museum in Mexico Amazing. City. So yeah, Amazing. and it all started just with, you know, like being consistent with things. And yeah. I have, I started a blog and I just would blog all the time about different topics and write about different topics. And um, it led to having books, to authoring books. Amazing. How did you figure out, because I'm trying to understand, like, what was your moment of hamster wheel life where you were like, okay, okay. So there's a difference between consistency and routine. So routine is like the hamster wheel. For me, Mm -hmm. like a good example was um, like my husband and I are both artists and we spent 10 years vending every weekend at events, hand making items, setting up the table, vending, you know, making however much one after another. That event life, that festival life. Yes. And it's fun, but you know what? It We, we were never able to scale that part of it up. And, mm. and I realize if we want to scale it up, we have to, because our hands are going to go be sore. We're going to, people keep buying the same things. So I decided to identify the best sellers and create collections to pitch to manufacturers so that I could design Crafty Chica products and have them in retail stores. I And the consistency with that came with spending a little bit of time every day what would my product line look like? What kind of stores would I want it in? What kind of manufacturers would I want to work with? Consistency with that dream, turning it into a goal and an action plan. So I stayed consistent with that and until I was able to find the path to make it happen. So my path was going to the craft and industry trade show and mm. You know, first going in, taking little packets of what Crafty Chica was, coming up with my um, my show, Don't Tell, which was Ugly Betty meets Martha Stewart with a dash of Oprah optimism. I love it. That people could quickly understand what my brand was about. And yeah. if they asked me, you know, what do you see? Like, how do you want to work with us? I'm like, oh, this is a clay company. I would love to design some clay cutting pieces that come in a set. Um, I, you know, the Latino, we 40% Hispanics in, in here in Phoenix, Arizona. Like I had the numbers to show the whole thing. The next right, year they right. invited me back as a speaker. And I'm like, okay. I'm going to be a speaker. I'm going to be speaking to a large group of people, manufacturers, so I can connect with manufacturers and pitch a product line. And um, so it's really being consistent with with what your your goal is and and building mm-hmm. an action plan. And to do that, you have to take some things out of your routine. So that meant I had to stop the hamster wheel. I'm like, if I'm going to work on what this product line would be. We can't be doing events all the time because it's burning me out like crazy, making, you know, three dozen magnets and three dozen this and three dozen that. It was just overwhelming. So really recognize what are the routine items that that really are not moving the needle. And then it's I always call it shaking your snow globe. (laughs) You know, where you shake a snow globe and all the glitter gets reset and it goes around. And then it like settles. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So you'd have to shake a snow globe and, and say, okay, time for something new and then be consistent on, on what that is and how you're going to make it happen. 
Amazing. So you make it sound like you had a whole team of people. You had a marketing person. You had no, an it was had... all me. But Amazing. you know what I did do was at the time that I launched Crafty Chica, I was working as an entertainment reporter at the Arizona Republic where I interviewed okay. movie stars. Like that was oh. my dream job in high school was to be a features reporter and interview musicians and movie stars. And then when I did it, I was like, you know what? What if I could do this for them? I want someone to write a story about me. And so I decided to flip it and use yeah. my uh, my blog and my brand as a way to leave the newspaper industry and do Crafty Chica full time. So mm -hmm. it's it when it was scary. It was really scary. But what I did was at the time I looked at websites like um Oprah, E Online. This was like in the two thousands, you know. Right. I was gonna I, say, yeah. Yeah, it, and I made my website look like theirs. Like I wanted it to look larger than life. I wanted it for anyone, uh, uh press people or the manufacturers who do products to look at my website and go, oh my gosh, I want to work with her. And, and that that was like still to this day, I have that everything I do, I'm like, I want someone to look at this and say, I want to make that, or I want to buy that, or I want to work with her. I want to hire That's her. That's like your compass. That's yes. like your compass that you come Setting back to when you're- I want people to feel inspired. Like I want them to make this project this weekend. And show me pictures next week. Well, we do. Because let me tell you, I see you on Instagram and I'm like, she makes it look so easy. I want to do that. You know? Yeah, but it's also consistency and learning a new yeah. skill. So again, Absolutely. knowing the difference between routine and consistency. Yes. Do you feel like that would be the best advice that you would give? you know, up and coming or even not even up and coming, right? Like creative Latina oh, leader, yeah. anyone, mom who's sitting stage. on the couch dreaming, right? Like what mm -hmm. would be the best advice you would give today? Okay. So this is something new that I shifted into over these past couple of years is mm -hmm. looking away from quote goals and mm. looking at it more as experiences that I want to have and looking at it in a higher perspective that everything is temporary. We're only here for a limited amount of time. And it's like a Disneyland. There's all these different lands, <laughs> you know, yeah. Frontierland, you know, Tomorrowland, all of that. Like, let's experiment with all of them. What do we want to do in this lifetime while we're here? What are the things we want to do? And, mm -hmm. and really telling yourself like, yeah, I can choose if I want to be a book author, let's write a book. What do, what are my ideas? What is my business? What kind of book would I write? And then you go to the library or to the bookstore and you look at similar books and you say, okay, I could do this. This is how I would do mine different. What are the publishers that publish these type of books? Let me go to their website and see what it takes to put in a submission. So, um, it's really thinking about what kind of experiences that you want to have and looking at. I have to sit with that. Yeah. I have to interrupt you because I'm having kind of like a light bulb moment. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you why this whole not gold, but experiences. Yes. For me. And I'm thinking other people feel the same because I'm not alone. Right. It's shared experiences. I feel like you saying experiences versus goals takes a little bit of the performance anxiety out of it. Yes. Yes. Right. Like exactly. I'm always like, Ugh! like, Oh, it's gotta be perfect, but it's never yeah. going to be perfect. And then, right. And then like we get, there's so many things, you know, the, the and like an example, it all. you know, like with Instagram, I loved it when they had that feature where you could turn off the likes. I immediately turned off. I don't want to know how many people liked it. I just wanted to, whoever's meant to see it. I hope they see it. And I yeah. hope it's a lot of people. I hope, you know, but when the numbers can mess with you and comparing, yeah. I don't, if the more time we spend worrying about numbers and compares, comparing things, the less energy we spend on creativity, on building a plan, um, yes. being consistent with something our heart is asking us to do. So yes, by eliminating those little things that trigger you, it, it's more helpful. And there are yeah. no rules. I mean, it's, I, I, ever since I turned that thing off, 
I feel like I have better engagement, better conversations. Um, I don't pay attention to the numbers part of it. They call them vanity metrics. I just have fun with it because. Oh my I gosh, even that it. sounds not nice. You vanity know, metrics I, sounds. Yeah, I, I just, I want to have the experience of connecting with as many other crafty chicas as I can. And so I'll mm -hmm. use social media and I'm like, whoever connects to this awesome let's do this and you know what happens it leads to opportunities yeah like if that is yeah. one of the the things that happens is that these little sparks go out and it leads to opportunities whereas before you know i would just look at the numbers and i would worry and i would think oh i want a brand to look at this and be impressed and want to hire me and you know what can i do to um what is the thing that everybody's making let me make my own version of it not being yeah. true to myself and then something happened when like when i shifted to the experiences thing i'm like yeah. i want to have the experience of people being excited to make this and and i had one like i want to have the experience of of seeing an end cap, a crafty chica end cap at Barnes and Noble. And <gasps> it, yeah. I mean, that was one I had from a long time ago. It at the time it seemed out of the question. But you know what? This past these past two years I had it where they had an end cap with my journal. With a profile freedom. My planners. It was for everything. They put my novels, they put my craft books, they put my daily, my monthly planners, my notepads, my blank journals. They put them all on an end cap with a big sign. And I thought, wow, the reason why it did not happen sooner was because mm -hmm. it wasn't ready then. Like, but yeah. then it became ready when I had all of these components that just came together. So when it was you, supposed to if, happen, if you have like a goal that you want to happen, you can't get discouraged if it doesn't happen when you want it to happen. It, it do everything you need to do for it and set it free. Let it go. And if it is meant to be, it will come around in the best way possible because I could have never predicted that it would be an end cap like this. I thought it would be an end cap like of all my craft books. And uh -huh. little did I know back then that I would be designing journals and planners and stationary greeting cards. Right. <laughs> I, I no, I know about the greeting cards. I'm there with you. That's kind of a like a like a power move right there, ma'am. You kind of just glossed over the end cap at Barnes. That's a big deal. First of all, that's like a dream come true. Yeah. So it's it's Absolutely. um it's something to think about. Like if I could do this, you guys listening, you could do it too. What is your end cap? You know, what is the your version of an end cap? Is it being a, you know, being paid to go on a trip to, you know, all across Mexico, or is it to, you know, taste, you know, be a restaurant critic or whatever, you know, have your own cookbook or what yeah. is your version of something big and say, you know what, I would like to have that experience. Like I'm putting I mean, that in the thing. I request that experience. <laughs> Right. Add that to your to your lands that you're going to follow. I love that. Yes. I'm going to carry that with me. I promise you, because I think, you know, the numbers, the analytics, the pressures, the comparison of it all. Yes. I mean, and one I mean, of the main reasons. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, like truth talk, like we do need to pay attention to our analytics to be able to read the room. Like, like I'm not saying never look at them make it build it into your system to where it's like okay once a week i'm going to review everything as a business person i'm going to mm -hmm. see like what are people loving what do they want to see more of i mean let me look at the data i'm all about numbers and data to see how to move forward how to plan two years ahead but it's the day-to-day -day looking at it that i don't want to see no <laughs> like, what I the creativity what's that balance though data. like is there a balance do you think kathy as far as like the brand, but the business, and then the actual creative process, which is yeah. the reason why you're even doing it, right? Because you yeah. enjoy the like. Is there a balance? What does that look well, like for you? I think that the balance is very organic, and it's it's never always completely balanced. Because what happens with me being a hyper creative, I will get an assignment from like a a big national brand that maybe pays a lot of money and it's for one project that has to be fabulous and hit it out of the park. Not only right. for people to love it, which is the number one reason is I want people to love it, 
but so the brand will hire me back. So I'll be proud of it. That's a lot of pressure. So you know yeah. what I do every time before I start on that, I'll do something fun. Like I'll make a bunch of mugs that have nothing to do with the deadline or a price tag. Okay. And once I get the mugs, like I, I'm using this because this is just what happened where I made like two dozen art sculpture mugs okay. and I just needed to do something for me to get it out of my system. And I said, I'm giving myself two days, 48 hours to make all the mugs that I want. And then I need to wrap it up and I need to get this project finished. And that okay. way I won't feel like I'm sacrificing my creativity, you know, of doing what I want to do in order to, to do this job that I'm having, even though it's a fun job, if there's still things like, I want to make the product shine. I want to, you know, hit all the key messaging points that they have. So that yeah. balance is carving space for myself first and doing something fun, get it out of my system. And then I go in wholeheartedly into working on the project for, for the brand. And I feel like that really works for me because if it's just work 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 and i this comes from experience because i used to do like brand deal brand deal brand deal and i'm like where is my time to craft like you know i want to just go back she's like i want to have fun i want to make what i want to make and um so i just have to incorporate that and sometimes it's not two days sometimes i'm like okay i'm gonna take one hour and i'm just gonna do you know design a new sticker on my ipad or just something fun or i'm gonna cook something or i'm gonna make a cool coffee drink and video it and do an instagram reel <laughs> then i'm like okay yeah. girl now it's time to get to work so i love that because that's almost the opposite of what well you know schooling and anyway the institution of yes all, it's right? like first you it's do the, the work opposite. and then you reward yourself I, everything I do, I kind of do it reverse, <laughs> reverse style, but that you have to find what works for you to create that balance because yeah. I want to be able to everything that I do and make and create be 100%. I wanted, I yeah. don't ever want to deliver something I'm not proud of or not excited about. And so if I can go into it wholeheartedly and, and like another quick example, when I worked at the newspaper full time and yeah. I wanted to work on my novel, it, there was a time where I was like trying to work on it during my lunch hour. And I'm like, oh man, like now I got to go darn and I have to interview Jake Gyllenhaal in 10 minutes. <laughs> I can't work on my novel. And I had to stop and say, I live in the present. When you are at work, you take time to eat your lunch. Take your two breaks, chill, relax, enjoy these awesome interviews. And then at nighttime from 9 p.m. to 11 p.m., work on your book. And I had to tell my family from 9 to 11, homework's got to be done by 9 p.m. Because mom, right, right. Her, you know, dishes are right. done, all of that. That was my time. And, and it made me look forward to it. So it, it allowed me to be at my job 100% during the day because I knew mm -hmm. it at nine o'clock that night. Sometimes it was 10 o'clock. Sometimes it was 11 o'clock, but I wanted to finish that book. So I yeah. carved out that time to do it. So it, you, you have to find what works for you. And for me, the magic comes when I'm excited, when I'm 100% there. The spirit is in it. I, I wonder if that would work for kids too, right? Not to get off topic, but I feel like because it's so the opposite of what we've been taught, where you're given that reward after, but so many times you just put it off, put it off, put it off, put it off. And you're saying, create the opportunity to get excited about the project. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you kind of get your dopamine first instead of yeah. at the end. And some people call it <laughs> right. procrastination. You know, right. some people call it but I call it like programmed procrastination. <laughs> you know? Incentivized. Yes. No, I'll I say. think it makes sense because you live yeah. in this world of creativity. And, you know, I explain to folks all the time, like you can't say to a creative person, an artist, a singer or whatever, like, okay, perform. Right. Like, right. It, it just doesn't, you know, okay, write a song now. Right. Yes. Like it doesn't always happen that way. Sometimes you're in the middle of eating a bagel and you're like, oh my God. Yes. right or uh -huh. taking a shower or whatever yeah. and so what you're saying does make sense though it's not counterintuitive 
Yeah. And you have no excuses because you can say, you know what? You already got it out of your system. Let's get this done. And, <laughs> now get and, it going. Yes. Yeah. And, and because I'm a businesswoman, like I have to time box everything because I also have a tendency if I don't have a to-do list, if I don't program the amount of time for each project, I can go off the rails quickly yeah. and go off to a completely different path and start, you know, going down the rabbit hole of where is Kate Middleton, you know? <laughs> and then three hours later, I'm like, oh my God. So I will say, okay, two hours on this, this project, I want it a total of six hours to complete this. So mm -hmm. by six o'clock tonight, I'll be wrapping this up and I'm going to go to bed feeling good that I have it done. And, and mm -hmm. halfway through, I can say, okay, this is going to take a little longer. So we'll push it to eight o'clock or I'll get up at six in the morning or seven in the morning and finish this last part then. So, but it's always writing it down. So and it helps keep me on track. It's like my little tether to, to get it completed. Does that help too with projects? I mean, I imagine when you're getting these huge, like brand deal that right when you start getting into that world of like, how much time am I actually spending on this project and paying myself back? Yeah. Well, when I work with clients, a lot of times I have to turn in a sketch and mm. I'll know from the sketch of like, okay, how many steps is it um, to show that to film and also people who watch it, if it's too many steps, they will cancel out. They'll mm. X out of it, you know? Yes. So, they check out. Like, yeah, no, yeah. I know the short. So yeah. If, attention. if I sketch it out and run through it that way, it helps me bring the, the project to life. And, yeah. and I, I can see the time of it. And my thing, um, I used to do too complicated because I think, oh, the more products I use, the happier the brand will be if I use all of their products. And now I've learned like sometimes, you know, simple is better. Like with, uh, I just did this Crayola project and I, my first thought is like this, 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 is this. And then I'm like, no, Kathy, keep it simple. So I use their air dry clay and I use their crayons and I created these really cool terrazzo inspired coasters and I just used those two so that people could look at it and say, oh, all I need is air dry clay and crayons and I can make that. I'm in. Like I don't have to do a whole hobby lobby run. I can right. just. Right. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I can just go to Target and get two things. Okay. Yeah. I think yeah. I can do that. Uh -huh. Or they might already have it actually when it's exactly. just that. Yeah. Those are the best if it's things they already have. Yes, absolutely. What's your creative process when you're not. Aside from like, okay, I've got a project. Let me do something to get inspired. What is your creative process aside from that, right? When you don't have a deadline. Um, when, I, when I'm when i just open with, I, I have a list of things that I want to make. So I have okay. an area in my studio with these cafeteria trays where I have supplies for projects, for tutorials, for Instagram and TikTok. So I keep them where I can see them every day. So I don't forget about them because if they go in the cabinet, out of sight, out of mind. And so that way I can look at them and I can say, okay, um, I can do this. If it's just comfort time, maybe I'll go, you know, watch a TV show or, you know, just hang, go have coffee with a friend. I'm very social. So I have a lot of like brunch meetings with friends and different places around Phoenix. So I build in time for that, for coffee, breakfast, meeting friends. And then mm -hmm. I feel great when I come home. It's time to get to work. <laughs> yeah. I, I was going to say, are you like a solo where you like to, I like to do a lot of my creative things by myself. I probably could have both. Kids and I'm busy, but do you like the choir or do you like, no, let's do a group party and paint. I do both. I definitely do both. Okay. So yeah, I, I'm a left-handed and middle child Sagittarian. <laughs> so I love middle child. doing things different. Yeah. Look at me. Yes. Yeah. So I do yeah. both. Oh my gosh. And you have like the special left-handed scissors and everything. I'm sure. <laughs> well, I did, but you know, in grade school, we were trained on right-handed scissors. So I just always stayed with it. So yeah. I do use Reddit because it's hard to always you just adjust it. I just adapted, you know, yes. you adapt when you have to. 
No, of course. And I can see all the beautiful stuff behind you. I'm like, I want to oh, see. I want to see what's up. Yes. Is that your book there on the corner? Yes. So up at the top here on the shelf is like the little Crafty Chica library. So yep. I have all of my books there. And I like putting things that I made, different things from my product lines from stores over the years, because it just is a constant reminder of you did that. Like, yes. let's do more. Let's keep adding to this. Like, this is yes. always you evolving. That. Because I love, you, this is what I love to do. And you get to do it every day and make yes. money. Come yes. on, Kathy, that's everybody's dream. That's the thing. And it's like, um, it's about thriving, not surviving. Mm. Because this is something. Say it learned. again for the people in the back, yes. Kathy. Thriving, not just surviving. Because what happens the, the number one question I get all the time for people when they want to leave their nine to five to do a creative business is they always say, how do you match your paycheck with what you make? And I'm like, I don't want to match my paycheck. I want to triple my paycheck. Yeah. Once you're an entrepreneur, especially being a creative, you can, you have so many ways to make money. There are so yeah. many ways. And sometimes I get overstimulated like this goes a little deeper. Like um, my dad, he was a very hard worker. And any opportunity he had to make money, he did it. So he worked by day as a civil engineer for the city of Phoenix. By night, he was fixing cars, fixing cameras, fixing watches, doing all of these different things. So now I am the next generation and that was embedded in me. And so mm -hmm. any way I could opportunity... I would like be like, oh, I need to do that. I need to do that. One morning, I'm like working on this Amazon thing to be an Amazon seller. And I'm like, wait a minute. Why am I? I don't need to do this. I'm thriving with my business. And I had to realize my dad worked that hard. So I wouldn't have to do that. You know, he helped. He put a work ethic in me. And now yeah. I can take it to a whole other level of he was a hyper creative also who he made jewelry he sewed he did um made model cars from clay and fiberglass before he was married once he got married he was all you know stuck to you know support the family so right. now i'm at the stage where i can do the creative things for a living and yes. so i would get overstimulated in all the different ways that there were to bring in income and I had, and you to wanted to myself. do them all. I like you really obligated. wanted to just be, yeah. I felt guilt and obligation that I needed to do all of them. And, and I realized that was scarcity mindset. I was operating out of fear. And yes. this, this was uh, several years ago. And there, there was this, um, her, he's, she's another Latina. She does finance stuff. Her name is Eileen Harris. And mm -hmm. we were both at a speaking engagement and, um, we, she's the one who told me like, why would you want to match your paycheck when you leave? Why did not set the goal to triple it? And my mind was blown. I'm like, you are absolutely right. Yeah. And she helped me crunch the numbers and that figure she came up with, I started using it as my password for everything. I and like within like the next year, year and a half, that's what my income was. And Look, I'm everybody's like, going to start doing that. They're going to be like, password yeah, is 100K. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or 300K. Right? You yeah. know, like, why not? You could do it. But once you have that, it's not like it just falls out of the sky. You say, okay, what are the actions I need to take? And it doesn't, you could do a, a lot of little things or you could do a couple big things. You can build a formula to it. Like if you want to bring in um, $10,000, what is your path to $10,000? You know, yeah. you can sell 10 things for a thousand dollars. You can like, you know, break it down. Yep. You can really break it down. Yeah. For this one. So once you can figure that out and work on that formula, suddenly it's not as pie in the sky as it seemed in the beginning. Yes. Yes. I want to touch a little bit on what you said earlier, because I think it's so prevalent and just like in my face, but also in our community, this feeling of guilt mm -hmm. to dream first of all to dream how dare you yeah. you should be working right but then to take it a step further and and do all the things that you love 
um, because you want to and then make right. Yeah. Because I, I think in our community, so many times our parents didn't have that luxury, right? right? And then we feel this like, not just pressure I really yeah I feel like guilt is the right word to yeah. be allowed to have fun or to um pursue your your passion right like yeah. instead of being like maybe a lawyer or you know whatever whatever you yeah. were programmed by your parents was like the the bar um because I felt that way too and so many and I yeah. trust me I've been there I worked in corporate making the six figures working yeah. 60 hours a week like big beautiful house and all the things that come with that but just feeling like I had to, right? Like yes. that was the, the and, and, you know, success. Really holding space for our parents and what they wanted for us is because it's, it comes from a place of fear. Like they want us to be safe. They want us to be taken care of. They don't want us to struggle. So that's yeah. why they're like, go be a lawyer, go be a doctor. <laughs> that, yeah, but they don't want us to struggle. Like as a parent, I have realized the best gift you can give to your child is to recognize what it is that they love to do mm -hmm. and nurture that. That is where their success will come is if helping guide them. I had two kids and one of them was into gaming and the other one was into making YouTube videos. And now both of them as adults, that's their business. Maya has Maya in the moment where she worked at BuzzFeed for several years and she has her own platform of things. My son's the geek life. He, he um, designed, invented this role play game that he did a Kickstarter and it got funded and he does all of these different things. So they both are able to take what they're passionate about and, and just go with it. And yeah. whereas if I, you, I had to like, it was a test as a mom because there was a point where I'm like, oh, I need to push them to go get their degrees and to do this, even though they didn't know what they wanted to do. And I'm like, I need, I'm not going to do that to them. Like, because they're going to get in debt and not know even what they want to do. I just so, said that in another podcast. Let me tell you, Kat, I want to hear from you. Like, what words did you use? Because I'm kind of dancing that line. So I've told my kids all the time, um, YouTube is a thing because um, the analytics and the likes and things, my yeah. babies are like 14 to nine, right? Yeah. They're really little. And I'm like, oh, I don't want them to start so early and be worried about likes. So we haven't done the YouTube thing yet, but yeah. I knew for me, I did feel that pressure. And so I've always said like, do what you love, the money will come. But yeah. inside my inner mama is like, Oh my God, but they need to go to college and they need to get a good job and they need, and how are they going to afford yeah. the mortgage? Right. Like, but I try not I, to I like, I think it's like that. really um, tuning in to what they're interested in. And yeah. if you, like, say they're like, I want to be a dancer when I grow up, I want to be a ballet dancer. Okay. Enroll them in ballet class, start making right. them do those exercises. Do they really love it? Sometimes it's like after six months, no, I don't want to do that. Right. <laughs> right. The truth of it, you know? And it's just kind of guiding them along the path to help them figure it out. And school, I mean, we're, we're again programmed to be so linear. And I, I had my associates early on. I didn't finish my bachelor's because I was afraid of math. I got my bachelor's at 38 years old it, when I was at the newspaper because I wanted a raise. I was... A new, I was getting paid as a news clerk, but I was doing two nationally syndicated columns. And there was a managing editor that, who would come by my desk and she said, this is so unacceptable. Like, if you don't go get your degree, you cannot do your columns anymore. You have to do news clerk, you know, stuff. And, and that scared me. And I'm like, okay, I'll do that. You know? <laughs> let me, so let me go pay for these classes and yeah. get the, right. The limitations, but we, but we accepted I was them. Ready. I was ready at that time to do it. I, I was not ready at 21 or 22. Yeah. I did it when I was ready. So you, you have to understand that it's it, school will always be there. And, you know, my sister is almost 50 and she's finishing up her bachelor's. So yeah. it's always going to be there. We don't have to rush everything. And I've yeah. seen kids who go through school, family, kids, and then 
they're in their 30s and they're like, oh my God, now what? Like I did everything. What's next on the checklist? And when you look at your lifeline, how long your lifeline is, like you look at a yardstick, right? It's, we're like, when you're in your 30s, it's barely at the very beginning, you know, like there's still so much road to go. So there's time to fill that space with other things. So we have to recognize that for our kids as well and pay attention to the times. It's not easy to buy a house right now. So it really is not. Let me tell you. On our kids, you know, it's it's really recognizing how things are right now and the best way that they can live their best lives. Agreed. It is a different time for them. It really is. I mean, it I know I look again. young, but it I'm 40 and again. I'm like, I don't even know how my babies are going to do it. I've already said, like, listen, you you don't have to move out when you're 18. Like, that's no longer the narrative for us. Uh You know what I mean? You don't have to go out there and struggle. You can stay home if you're if you're an entrepreneur or you're going to school, like whatever it is, because it's just a different world. And we have to adjust and expecting them to go into debt instead of maybe being a baker if that's what they really love. Right. Yeah, Yeah, definitely. I'm so glad that you're on board with that because I agree with you. It's like. Uh, support being a supportive parent also a protective parent also a reasonable parent but then also Uh just allowing them to be themselves and fail a little bit yes not forcing what we wanted to do with our lives on them (laughs) yes yes for people i always wanted to be a lawyer my kids going to law school you know right (laughs) it's like i'm in law school and i hate it like i want to do something else so yeah really just recognizing what it is that they are into yes absolutely and if it is education right like then supporting them for that and and yeah, showing up for them when they need it, if that's what they really want to do, and, too. And a good way to do that is through acts of service. Like, yeah. if there's an area that they're interested in, connect them with local community organizations where they can go volunteer and be a part of these different organizations and to learn about community and learn about all the different types of people and situations that are out there to teach them empathy. So when they do figure out what they want to do, they can come from, they can have like a humanitarian angle as well as a personal goal angle with that too. Absolutely. Like real, real experiences come along Mm -hmm. with that. Yeah. Um, I've had so much fun talking to you. Thank you for having me. I'm so grateful. This is so I've fun. Really, I've really had some really light bulb moments that I'm going to take with me. Experiences versus goals was one of them for sure. Mm-hmm. Yes. Really, truly. Um, but I want to ask you one more question. Sure, sure. Okay. I want to know from you, what is your message to the world today? But here's why I say today. Yeah. I know for me, right? Like, oh, here's my message. This is my message from two months ago is different than it would have been today Yeah, based on what I went through today. Do you know what I mean? And so yes, being like, what is your message is too broad now, or maybe it's because I'm older. I don't know what it is, but I'm at a point where I'm like, where are you today? Like, I want to know your state of being today. Maybe today motherhood was hard, right? Or maybe today being a good sister was a challenge. You know, what do you feel like your message is today? So my message is for everyone to recognize that everything is temporary. Hmm. Whatever you're doing right now, it's going to change. And so appreciate the present moment that you're in. And, um, you know, like just recognizing that people grow older People quit, companies evolve, change, get sold. Maybe, um, you know, you have a change of jobs or um, just everything changes all the time. It's one of the facts of life. So by really um, taking action on things that you want to do, like thinking of your future self, like being inspired by your past, but not letting it rule you, but knowing that you can you know, change the course in your direction at any time and just like living in that present moment, but also nurturing your future self too, to make it easier for them. And I always say, I feel like my gut instinct is my future self giving me a hint. So Mm. every time I have a difficult decision, um, and this is different for each person, but for me, 
uh, when I, I just know instantly if something is a yes or a no. And, and that's another one. If it's not a hell yeah, it's a no. This is what I heard at a conference a long time ago. Yes. And if, if it's not a hell yeah, it's a no. And yeah. if that's your instinct talking yeah. is, and you, you know, it's a red flag. If you, if you're like, Ooh, you know, when really, you know, the answer, but you're afraid because it'll create change. It'll create a new challenge. So it might not be perfect. It won't be the goal right. that you had in mind. Yes. So just, you know, recognizing that everything is temporary so that it really helps you appreciate the moment, but it also helps you plan for the next thing, knowing that yes. this is temporary. So you want to plan for the next thing. And even on the hamster wheel, things, you can stay on the same hamster wheel, but everything the world is changing around you. <laughs> you know, yes, so that's, that's true. why it's good to like, you know, get uh, try to get off of it. Look at what what are the areas in your life that are routine that you can switch up. Thank and you, from thank a you. Angle, what one last thing? Yes, uh, from yes. A business angle. This is what I love to tell people is to um, number one, if they were to author a book, what would the book be about? These are things to plan for for your business. Like it's almost like a manifesting thing. If you were to have a product line, what would the product line be? for your mm -hmm. brand. And number three, if someone gifted you $10,000 right now, what would you do with that money to turn it into more money for your business? So those are three questions that you can use for your business to help you find your North star and get out of the weeds to think bigger. Yes. Today, anybody could Today. apply that. Yeah. While they're scrolling and looking at us. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm so grateful. Thank you. Thank you for I hope we get to cross me. paths again. Yes, for sure. Yes. Have a wonderful night. And you to everyone who's listening, you can find me at craftychica.com, all over Instagram or TikTok, YouTube at Crafty Chica. Say hi. Come yes, say hi. check out her line at Barnes and Noble. Pick up yes. her book. Hello. Uh -huh. Forever Frida. Absolutely. Yes. If you haven't already, let me tell you, I'm in there like at bedtime. I'm like, what's Crafty Chica doing? Oh, oh okay. That, okay. I need crayons. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I love Thank it. Thank you. you so much, Kathy. Bye-bye. Bye. What did you think of the conversation? If you enjoyed what you heard, let us know in the comments. And please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with your friends. Thank you for listening to the Latina Leadership Podcast and we will see you next time.